my way to understanding the unit circle and in this exercise we're going to look at quadrantal angles so what is a quadrantal angle well if we've got an angle on the coordinate plane in standard position and in standard position means that the initial side lies on the positive side of the x-axis and if it's a quadrantal angle, the terminal side is also going to lie on one of the axes. And we're trying to determine the trig functions for that. Now, let's say I'm going to move from this initial side. Let's look up here at the positive side first of the y-axis. So at this point, on this axis here, the positive side of the y-axis, if we're in degree mode, this would be 90 degrees, and in radian, this would be pi over 2. Now, we have begun to define, since we're using the unit circle, uh, to determine our trig functions based upon the x and y coordinates. And I guess back up just a second. The, the terminal side is also going to refer to the radius now on a unit circle the reason why it's called a unit circle is that the radius is going to always be equal to one so if I, we got a quadrantal angle where the terminal side lies on the positive side of the y-axis well what is x at this point well x is equal to zero and if we define we might would say r but if we define r as 1, then our coordinate here is 0, 1. Our cosine is 0, and our sine is 1. Now, suppose our, quadrant, our terminal side of our quadrantal angle lies on the negative side of the x-axis. Well, at this point, we know that we're either at 180 degrees or we're just at pi, halfway around the circle. And let's think about uh, what we have here. Well, this would be uh, our x-coordinate uh, would be r until we define it. But at y, we're at 0. Now, if we define r as 1 being a unit circle, then our cosine here is 1 and our sine is 0. All right, let's see. Now let's say we're down here on the negative side of the y-axis, which would represent 270 degrees or 3 pi over 2. Well, again, x at this point is equal to 0. We're on the 0 side of the x-axis. And if r, our radius, is equal to 1, then our y-coordinate or our sine here is just 1. And if we come all the way back around to the positive side of the x-axis, and let's say our terminal side is um, lying on the positive side of the x-axis, we, we know that this is either at 0 or 360 or 2 pi. And again, our y-coordinate is equal to 0. And if we define r as our x-coordinate, our radius lying on that x-axis is 1, then we would have the cosine there at 1. All right, well, let's look at these trig functions. Well, then what is the cosine at 270 degrees? And again, our cosine, we can say, is, that, is our x-coordinate. Well, at 270 degrees, our cosine is 0. Now, what about the cosecant? Well, the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. So let's see if we started out with that sine is y over r. And in this case, r is 1. And at pi over 2, our sine function is 1. And even the reciprocal of that, well, the cosecant then is going to equal, at pi over 2 is going to equal 1. Now, what about the cotangent of negative 90 degrees? This time we're coming back this way, 90 degrees, which is also the equivalent of 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2. 
Let's see, the cotangent. Well, let's, let's start with the tangent. The, ta the tangent is x over the opposite, y over x. And so then our cotangent is going to be x over y. Well, at this point, we've got 0 over 1. So our cotangent at negative 90 degrees is 0. Now, you might see that since we've got all these zeros in here, we could have some trig functions that were undefined where we're trying to divide by 0. And, of course, in the real number world, we cannot do that. Although in calculus, that becomes an indeterminate value. That's something for a later day. All right, trig functions of quadrantal angles.